Uh oh. He's got it. There he goes. Did he get ya? They're strong. The piglets are officially four weeks old. So now it's time for them to move out and have a bigger area. We would love to leave them out in the pasture so they can eat up all the grass, but a couple of them got stuck in the canal last time we let them out. So I think it's best to leave them in here for now and then let them out periodically throughout the day. So we're putting the rooster over here with the boys. He is kind of causing some problems and hurting some of the other chickens. So he will be over here unless he is needed to uh, breed with some chickens and uh, make us some fertile eggs. Well, you guys are becoming best <laughs> friends. I know. Oh my goodness. Oh, and the chicken wants to play too. Hello. Oh, good job. Hi. Are you having fun on your play date? They are a funny little pair. So Kevin has been working hard training Salem and little Elsa to be friendly. Elsa seems to be the friendliest piglet out of the bunch and the least loud. So putting them together is nice because she's pretty sweet and Salem can hopefully learn to be sweet with her. You gotta share with Elsa sometimes. <laughs> My plan is working perfectly. <laughs> to get them to be buddies. Both of them love the dig. Look at, she's just rooting hey, through hey. the... Oh my nose. gosh. They cannot be trusted together. Teach each other good manners. So Salem is not an LGD. She's not a livestock guardian dog. But the reason why we chose this breed, which is a giant schnauzer, is so that she could be a good family dog, you know, kind of a regular farm dog and also be animal safe. So we've been really good about putting her with the goats, with the pigs, with the chickens and teaching her not to bite at them or eat them. So our hope is that this will work and when she's older, we can completely trust her around the animals. A livestock guardian has different instincts. They bond really closely with your livestock. They live with them a lot of the time and they have a really strong urge to protect them. Salem won't have as much of an urge to protect the livestock, but she will have an urge to protect our property. So hopefully she'll alert us and bark off a coyote. Giant schnauzers were bred originally in Germany as farm dogs, not necessarily the livestock guardian, but they're good guard dogs. They're, they've been used for police dogs. So we're confident that she's gonna be really loyal and protective of us and our property. All right, so I've been wanting to take really good pictures of the goats, and so today we're gonna try, we're gonna try to position them properly, and we'll see how they do. Perfect, perfect. Okay, Winnie, don't slump over. Okay, so you're, j perfect. Bring that back leg up forward, a little bit more forward, a little bit. A little bit perfect, perfect. Perfect, Willow, that's beautiful. It's okay, it's okay. She's doing pretty good. That's good. Good job, Tilly. That one leg is really far back. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, that's good, that's good, that's good. Luna wants a picture, so we'll do a really fast one, Luna. Okay. Really fast, stay there. <laughs> Beautiful. Now we just have to do with the bucks. Perfect. Perfect. Oh man, all you guys that get really good pictures of your goats, props to you guys, because that is really hard to hold them there and get a really good shot. But I'm excited because now I can see their entire body structure and put it up on my website and have like the good foundation goats on the farm all, all organized and looking pretty. Excited mood tonight. Fighting and playing and running around. Will, Willow's like, stop it. Those are the three musketeers right there. They love each other. Normally Tatum's very uh, low combative and normally Winnie's way overpowered her. Mm -hmm. You look really good. You look really cute with your baby. We'll take a picture of you like that. 
with Tilly's tail in the way. Is that your best side? Oh, so cute. Well, if that isn't the cutest thing that you've ever seen. Do you guys all love each other? Are you guys all best friends? Hmm? Well, well, well. Looks like a little Silky has been laying her tiny little eggs right under here. Well, that's a perfect little nest. That's where I would lay. Yeah. Got all the animals out here. These babies are pretty cute. And you are cute too, Tilly. Tilly doesn't like when we scratch her babies and don't give her love. Tilly needs love just as much as her babies need it. Tilly, I have to be able to scratch your baby. You're so mean. You guys are so cute. Look at that face. Winston face. This is the vine that's gonna work, Kevin. Yes. I think it will. We've tried to grow so many things on this pergola. We have a jasmine over there, which is doing great. But this, this one's always died. I don't know, everything we put here, a creeping fig, everything's died. We're excited because this tangerine cross vine is gonna do good. Oh, they're, uh, they're pretty. We already have a beautiful tangerine vine here in the garden that we know does well here. So eventually we'll have vines on this thing, guys. Eventually. <laughs> it might take 10 years. Yeah, but that's okay. It's worth it. Welcome to morning chores on the farm. Tilly has always disliked Astrid, and I don't know why. Maybe she's just protective of her boys. Luna is still the queen, even at breakfast time. I think Carlisle has forgiven me for taking those two eggs, but I'm not sure. The bucks are finishing up their breakfast and hoping they get a visit from the girls. Salem is getting so much better at being patient while we do the chores. Good girl. We start off by milking Tilly, and I'm not really sure if she knows what's going on. But without fail, she always goes back to her babies. It looks like she's decided to start weaning them. To reward Salem's patience, we give her a little squirt of milk. <laughs> Fern doesn't mind us doing that. She doesn't know what's going on either. And now, Stella. I've Stella. never milked Stella before. I don't, is she like Luna? I don't know. She's really good. She never kicks. She never kicks. Just don't mess with her. Just don't mess with her legs. <laughs> She's all, You're so weird, Stella. Her teats go towards the back. Yeah. But she is easier to milk. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. She's all, Mwah. She smells like corn. Why do you smell like corn, Stella? Corn goat. She's actually really easy to milk. And finally, the chickens. After we feed them, we gather the eggs. And what do you know, Kiwi finally started laying on her eggs. Half of them are her eggs, which are totally unfertilized, but the other half are meat chicken eggs. And that's it for the chores. And after we're done with the chores, it's time to make breakfast. So I thought I'd show you guys a typical breakfast on our farm. I don't have a lot of spinach right now, but it's always just enough to add to an omelet. So I'll grab a bunch of that, and then a few little tops off the onions that didn't quite bulb out. So they're perfect for chopping into little green onions. It's always so rewarding to just grab something from the garden and then make breakfast out of it. This tomato is from the store. Our tomatoes haven't gotten quite big enough to produce actual fruit yet. So I'll just saute down the veggies 
add some fresh eggs from this morning, a little bit of salt and pepper, and then cut up those onion tops and sprinkle it over our little scrambled omelet. So as you guys know, we've been taking care of Pepper Pumpkin, my aunt's cat. You're so sweet. You look mad and mean, but you're fine. My aunt passed away last month. So we're just trying to get Pepper Pumpkin used to our area, used to the farm, and we're hoping that we'll be able to let her out, but we're not quite sure yet. What are you thinking, Liddy? I mean, I don't know. She's, she's a pretty flighty cat. I mean, she doesn't really like loud noises or strangers, so. We gotta introduce her to Chloe. That's the next yeah. big step. I think Chloe will be sweet with her. We wanna be really cautious about how we introduce Chloe to Pepper Pumpkin. So if you have any tips for us, put it in the comments below. We're trying to be really careful about everything. We're hoping that Pepper will stay here when we let her out, but we think that she's gotta be friends with the other cats first. That's the plan. So we get a lot of questions on what we do with all of this poop on our property from all the animals. And well, we just compost it and put it back in the garden. But we just recently decided to do a brand new composting system. So here is our new compost system. We're gonna toss out the old ones because you can't roll them. And we have to be able to roll them. Have to. <laughs> it's too much work. Can you open it and show what's inside? Yeah. This is our new compost area. And inside, is all of the stuff that we've gathered from the barn, basically. And it's really fun for me because I get to get cheap stuff on Craigslist, used barrels, 20 bucks. Nice. Yeah, we just roll it because you always gotta mix up compost in order for it to really work. There are a lot of complicated tutorials on how to compost and all of them just overwhelm me. So what I do is we just keep it simple. We put the poop in the barrel, add some straw or some sort of carbon source like leaves or grass, add water, mix it up and- Let the sun cook it. That's it. Then once it's all broken down, we just add it back to the garden. If you have irrigation, it's really good to drill holes. Yeah, and we sometimes add a little bit of extra water, but mostly when the water, when our yard gets flooded from the flood irrigation, then it can soak these and yeah, that's basically it. Thanks for watching today's video, guys. If you wanna watch the video where Salem and the piglets first met, click right here.